This is Dropped Among This Crowd, a podcast that dives into the music and community of improvisational progressive rock band, Humphrey Shaggy. Each week will feature a rotating schedule of insightful full show recaps, interviews with fellow Umphreaks, members of Team UM, as well as other musicians who have been inspired by and or played with the band. This is your place for all the latest news and happenings within the world of Umphreys, helping keep you informed on what's been recently released or where you can catch the next show. I'm your host, Sarah Jahimia. Thanks for joining me as we dive in. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this week of Dropped Among This Crowd. I hope that you were able to check out the last fresh episode two weeks ago where we started the Winter Tour 2022 review, chatting about the tour kickoff in Syracuse, New York on January 21st through the two nights in Boston on February 11th and 12th. There is a link in the show notes if you missed it and wanted to catch up. There's also a link in the show notes for my 2022 highlights playlist from nugs.net, featuring all the tunes from that episode and this one from Winter Tour that I thought were standouts. Give that a spin, and if you have a list of your own, please feel free to send it my way. I'm always interested to see what others thought were highlights from a particular tour run of shows. Before we get into it this week, I want to remind you about the first full episode of the WOW show that dropped last Wednesday, March 9th, side A of the Hurt Birdbath discussion featuring Rob Turner and Jimmy Knowledge's thoughts on the tune. They get into the composition, the lyrics, early versions, and you'll hear some really, really great insight and stories from Bayless and Stasic on the tune. That can be found anywhere you stream podcasts or by heading to datcmediacompany.com under the final word tab. Side B of the Hurt Bird Bath discussion will drop March 23rd. Also, before we get into part two of our winter tour dissection, we must talk about the new single, Small Strides, that dropped at midnight on March 11th. I will not disclose how many times I've listened to this. <laughs> it's an embarrassing amount of times for sure. But damn, it's so good. And I feel like every single time I've listened to it when I'm done, I'm just like, yeah, damn, that was that's really, really great. Also dropping that same day, the very anticipated new album announcement coming July 1st the 14th studio album called Asking for a Friend. Umphreys released a really great write-up about the process, everything that has been going on the past two years and how it affected them and influenced the songs on this album. Really, really great. Um, it's on their website, and I will link that in the show notes. Highly recommend that you read that. Um, so between the dropping of this second tune and reading what the band had to say, I don't know about you, but I am even more excited to hear what this album holds. These first two songs definitely hitting me. I know it's happening to everybody who's listening to them. Um, you know, the past few years been a lot for everybody so i'm really really excited to uh to see what what else is coming ah so excited pre-order is now available um for this you'll also find a link for that in the show notes and dude <laughs> did you see the photos of the guys <laughs> that come in the album some serious 80s dad Kmart photo vibes like the argyle pants and the sweater vests and Jake's mullet like (laughs) that was exactly the energy I needed that day 
<laughs> I couldn't even stop laughing. It's just the greatest thing ever. The facial expressions. <laughs> the clip. I just can't even. I can't even. Just comedic gold all around. If you didn't see them, do yourself a favor. I posted them on social media. Um, and, you know, if you go on the merch website, you can see them. Um, just exactly what you need. Like, you're going to need that laugh. And I'm super excited to frame those and hang them in my house among the other family photos that I have up. And, you know, waiting for the reaction of people when they come in my house and they see them. It's going to be so priceless. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, the new album is going to be absolutely fantastic. There's no doubt, but come on, the <laughs> pictures alone are worth, you know, worth the price 100%. And we can thank photographer Chad Smith for those. Um, I saw a post that he made earlier in today, actually, um, and he talked about doing those photos. So shout out to you, dude. Those are fantastic. All right, so this week, like I mentioned, we'll wrap up our Winter Tour 2022 review, kicking off with February 17th at Express Live in Columbus, Ohio. The tunes from this evening that would make my highlights list, Miami Virtue, absolutely dripping with Genesis vibes, Really coming out after it breaks through slightly after seven minutes. The second I heard it, when I first listened back to this, that's what I thought. And every time I listened to this Miami Virtue, I thought the same thing. Maybe it's because I've just been really diving into the Genesis catalog. But no, it definitely is dripping with those vibes. Also from that evening, Red Tape, number five, Bad Friday, and Robot World. That Robot World is really nasty. Worth the mention, also, the Jam Inside Whistle Kids. Very nice. Uh, nothing noted on all things Umphreys, but for sure, I thought gave off some really heavy Grateful Dead vibes. Perhaps there could have been a tease inside there, like an actual tease. Um, but I'll be the first to admit, I don't know their catalog like that. Um, so if you know, please let me know. I love the shit. Um, but either way, it was definitely giving off those vibes. Also from the evening, Immigrant Song, inside the second half of Snucka that closed out the second set. I would absolutely love for them to open up the weekend in Iceland with that. How perfect would it be? Please, guys, come on. That would be sick. <laughs> uh, February 18th at the Anthem in Washington, D.C. Ben Factor specifically brought up this venue um, more than once, maybe even three times um, when we talked about Winter Tour recently. That conversation will be coming to you in two weeks. Excited for you guys to hear what he had to say. So from this evening, Intentions Clear and the first part of 1348, found in the first set, made my list. Honorable mention, the silent type. I'm sure I've said this a few times, but that song has really been getting the treatment recently. So here for that. Sad Clint Eastwood coming out during this evening in Washington, D.C. Last played to 2014, 659 shows ago at the Riviera Theater in Chicago, Illinois. By the end of this winter tour, they would play three mashups. Random fun fact for you. <laughs> Moving along to February 19th at the Ritz in Raleigh, North Carolina. Dump City and Smell the Mitten found a way onto my highlights list. Hot for Teacher by Van Halen would be nestled inside Utopian. That was last covered 144 shows ago at House of Blues in Anaheim, California on 7-3-2019. Um, for specifically the second half, I did put on my highlights list. I did also put it on my 2022 Hall of Fame contenders list. That's a separate playlist of tunes that I either know for sure, yes, I will be voting for, or that I want to make sure I listen to when it comes time to vote. 
Another honorable mention, Empire State, coming out again for a second play this winter tour. Perhaps you'll remember that they played it back in Syracuse on January 21st. This song has only been played four times ever. Ever. And two of those times were this winter tour. Other times were 6-18-03 and December 13th, 2002. Also want to shed light on that bridge list sandwich with glory in the middle. Not on my highlights list, but that was just a really nice one. I just, I love bridgeless. I have the lyrics tattooed on my body. Sue me. I just, I love it when it comes out. So I just thought that was a great one to at least mention. February 20th at the Signal in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Cut the Cable, a pretty fat fucking DBK. Will it move to the final round? I don't know. Um, But it was a really, really nice one. So I'm going to throw that on that uh, Hall of Fame contenders list that I just mentioned. We'll see. Uh, Lots lots of the year left for them to fuck up DBK some more. (laughs) Uh, Rocker into Rocker 2. Last time this happened, May 1st, 2015 at Brooklyn Bowl, Las Vegas. During Um Bowl that year, during quarter two. Also, February 6th, 2015, at the Ryman to end the first set, Rocker into Rocker 2. The Rocker 2 specifically found a spot on my highlights list. Black Sabbath and War Pigs both last played on February 17th, 2017, in Asheville, North Carolina. Night Nurse, pretty damn fire, and a nice contrast after Sabbath to open the second set. The real fire, however, from the whole night, the second set from Bright Lights, Attachments, Into the Fuzz, Into Tinkles, that whole thing found a spot on my list. Highly recommend listening in any order you want to, but I would listen to it in the order that it happened. Um, because then you just get the whole story, right? Um, but yeah, (laughs) that was just absolute fire. And I think that whole like section right there is is why it was um one of the shows of the winter tour, I thought. And you know, I heard other people um, you know, say the same about Chattanooga. So that brings us to the last two shows we're gonna talk about this week. Two nights in Asheville, February 25th and 26th at ExploreAsheville.com Arena. Andy and Chris would join the guys of La Special during their opening set on night one. Highlights from the 25th, Uncommon, into 2 by 2 with that sexy as fuck fame jam in it. Um, Definitely that Uncommon. Like, okay. (laughs) Uh, You can find video of that on the band's YouTube page. Also a link in the show notes. Honorable mention, a cover of Mark Knopfler's We're Going to War. Pretty apt considering current world circumstances. Played 58 times, last taken for a spin last year when the band made a stop at Levon Helm Studio in Woodstock, New York. Video of that evening uh, last summer can be watched on Nugs. You go under like the video tab when you go into Humphreys. Um, it's there. And literally the entire second set of this evening as well. 40s, Higgins, a junk sandwich with mail package and in the kitchen stuff inside. And a cover of Justice for All by Metallica played 29 times total. Last taken for a spin back in 2020, right before everything went to shit. March 6th at the Belly Up. Do you create really rad fan art? Is your band wanting to get into the ears of Umfreaks? 
Maybe your small business provides an awesome service and you'd like some like-minded clients to work with. Are you looking to hire some music-loving folks for your team? Perhaps you've had an idea for an Umphreys-themed podcast or something else that you just know this community would love, but you weren't sure where to start. Dropped Among This Crowd Media Company wants to help. With space available for your Umphreys-related show idea, social media promotion of your band, ad spots across the network, and so much more, Dropped Among This Crowd Media Company can help you be seen, heard, and reach tons of fellow umfreaks, musicians, and other kind folks. Want to know more or have questions? Shoot an email to sarah at datcmediacompany.com. And finally, night two in Asheville on February 26th, there would be a UMVIP set. That set list would include Last Man Swerving into Malshay's Odyssey, The Fussy Dutchman, Much Obliged into Thin Air. Again, those shows are not available for re-listen on Nugs, but you can find the set list on all things Umphreys. Jake would sit in with Le Special on the Metallica tune Enter Sandman. There is video of that up on Le Special's YouTube page. And you can also find a link in the show notes. Highlights for this night in Asheville. Ringo. Seasons. I am always here for this one to stretch its legs and enjoy a nice wander around the neighborhood. Shout out to the conclusion of the evening befores. All in time to close out the first set. Hurt Birdbath. The band also released video from this on their YouTube page. Also in the show notes. And also, like I mentioned, at the top of the show, the first episode of the WOW show began their dissection of that tune. If you want to check that out, link in show notes or anywhere you stream podcasts. And something that was pretty cool, Jam Base mentioned the WOW show and DATC Media Company in their article about the Hurt Bird Bath video. That was very, very awesome and also very rad to read for sure. Oh, man, that was so, so cool. And just it's been a couple of months. So to read that, even though it was just like the littlest blurb at the end of it, it was it was just really awesome. And ah, it was so great. So thank you to Jam Base and Scotty Bernstein for taking the time to shout out the new show and DATC Media. I I don't know if you really understand how much it really uh, how much it really, really means to me. So thank you. All right. <laughs> Back to Asheville before I start to cry. <laughs> Slacker uh, would find a seat on my list and we'd also get a Filthy Come Closer this evening, another mashup of Nine Inch Nails Closer and the Beatles Come Together, performed live a total of 27 times. Last time taken for a spin, October 25th, 2019 at Suwanee Halloween. The weekend would end with a cover of Live or Let Die by Wings with Kanika Moore on vocals. Played 28 times, last on March 20th, 2019 at the Showbox Soto in Seattle, Washington. And I mean, I love Wings. If you've been listening to this show, you know how I feel about Band on the Run. Um, So I was hype as fuck about this. I was just uh, jamming so hard. And I saw on Nugs that, you know, people write their comments. Everybody's got comments. Um, everybody's got opinions, like my dad used to say. <laughs> opinions are like assholes. Um, but somebody had like mentioned that she but- butchered the lyrics, and there was definitely a part that she like I don't even remember if maybe she like repeated it or whatever. Something happened, but like who cares? I know I've done it myself when singing along to Wings and like whatever. But I didn't even care <laughs> because it was so good. She's so amazing. And I just love Kanika. And I just wanted another uh, excuse and moment to shout her out. She's such a powerhouse. And I love her. And I'm so glad that they brought her out to do the lyrics for this because she killed it. So 
anytime I can commend Kanika, I'm going to do it. So fuck yeah, queen. Looking at my highlights list, like I said before, it seems Chattanooga on the 20th um, is up there as fantastic shows of the year. Um, the Newport, Kentucky show on 227 um, was also really hot. I mean, of course, you can argue Detroit night one was like, holy fuck, night two, two, of course. I mean, Albany, Syracuse, I mean, really any of the stops. I think I came out with like 96 songs on my highlights list. So, I mean, it was a fucking fire winter tour, no doubt. And, you know, let's not forget that they canceled the Buffalo show. They canceled the the two New York City shows. So, I mean, if those were factored in, they're like, geez, (laughs) you know. So, I mean, it was definitely a fire winter tour. Um, But looking at most of the songs that made the highlights list, those two shows were up there. So if you're looking for shows to kind of like start with those two um, and then head to Detroit for sure, because those two nights were fire. And that's where that mantis is that mantis. I'll tell you um, again, if you'd like to check out my nugs 2022 list, there is a link in the show notes. The belly up run will be featured in episode 193, 192 coming in two weeks. We'll feature my chat with Ben Factor, who will share some more about the incredible work that he's been doing during winter tour. It was so much fun to talk to him. I love talking with Ben anyways. It's so fun. And we just laugh our asses off. He's just hilarious. And it was funny because it was it was funny. Yeah, frustrating, but funny because my light, my main light in my studio is not working. I still have to figure it out. Like today, I need to work on that. Um, but, but like the main light, for some reason, when I plug it into my laptop and get all my stuff going for interviews, it hasn't been working. It's been like shutting off. And so it was just really kind of funny that like I'm talking to Ben Factor, who's the light guy, and like my light's not working. So finally, we just said, fuck it. And I used the flashlight on my phone, like illuminated so we could see each other in the Zoom call. Um, so that was just really funny. Um. But talking to Ben is such a great time. He's such an awesome guy. And I love what he has to say about his work. Um, And he's just so humble, too. Um, So I'm really, really excited to bring that conversation to you guys and for you to hear about everything that he was doing during winter tour. I know he was blowing everybody's minds. And, you know, the interwebs were all all abuzz with the incredible work that he has been doing. So make sure you tune in in two weeks for that conversation with Ben Factor. All right, so that's everything I have for this week of the show. In the show notes, you'll find links for part one of the winter tour rundown. Again, that covered the opening show, Syracuse, on January 21st, through to the two nights in Boston, February 11th and 12th. You'll also find links for where you can check out that 2022 Nugs highlight list of mine that I keep chatting about. Also in the show notes, you'll find links for where you can check out the DATC Pod Vault stuffed, so stuffed, with a bunch of incredible past episodes to binge on, where you can check out Side A of the Umphreys Wow Show that premiered last Wednesday. Shop the DATC store, find out more about Crooked Conversations, and so much more. So make sure you check all of that out. I will see you around these parts in two weeks. Mad love.